Hi folks, today we're going to be looking at radar warning receivers. That's the circular display over on the side of the screen. The radar warning receiver uses a series of sensors on different parts of the aircraft to detect incoming radar signals and inform the pilot accordingly. There are several generations and types of displays for radar warning receivers, and War Thunder's user interface has kind of unified them all in a one. We're going to go over the major types, and in this video, I'll be explaining the basic principles, showing you how to read the stat card, looking at the basics of the display interface, and going over the major categories of receivers from least to most advanced. The first thing to understand is what your radar warning receiver is actually receiving. I'm going to vastly oversimplify some of this, because this is a War Thunder guide and not a university course on radio engineering, and I'm leaving out a lot of stuff that isn't relevant or isn't currently modeled in the game, so please keep that in mind as you're furiously nitpicking in the comments. On a basic level, the radar warning receiver has some sensors on the plane that detect incoming radar signals from another plane. In the game, some units will show you which sensor on the plane is receiving the signal, or will estimate the direction and or range of the signal. This tends to be a fairly accurate estimation at medium ranges, but up close, like within one or two kilometers, the accuracy of radar warning receivers drops off significantly due to the way radar transmitters work. What you're looking at here is a diagram of radar energy coming from a typical directional transmitter, like a fighter's radar set. The main lobe is what the fighter uses to search and track targets out in front of it. However, as you can see, the energy coming out of the radar set isn't exactly a straight line. It's got those side lobes and even a back lobe that isn't visible on the diagram, which also contains some radar energy. There's also a significant amount of spillover radiation that just dumps out in a chaotic pattern to the sides of the radar transmitter. This is just an example, as the exact patterns for the lobes and spillover are different based on the radar set and the antenna, but the point is that a radar warning receiver generally can't tell the difference. As you can see in this footage, this means that at close range, your receiver might still be getting a signal from a plane, even if the other plane can't actually see you on their radar set, or isn't actually locked onto you. Another complicating factor is that, again, radar energy disperses as it goes out from the transmitter, and if you're flying nearby to another plane, and somebody is locking onto the other plane that you're near, your radar warning receiver usually can't tell the difference and will still be receiving some of that extra radar energy and it's going to alert you as if you're the one being locked onto. Over time, with experience, you'll get some instinct for when these sort of things are happening and it's not really something that can be taught. But just know that it is possible for your radar warning receiver to go off even if you specifically aren't the one actually being searched or tracked. Now let's look at some radar warning receiver stat cards in-game. You can view the stats on your plane's radar warning receiver by going into the X-ray view and mousing over the pilot. As you can see, there are a pretty wide variety of units with different combinations of features, and this is only a small sample. All receivers will have at least three items listed, the name of the unit, the band, and the range. The band indicates the different radar bands that the unit can detect. If you need more information about radar bands, you can check out my complete guide to radar sets, which I'll link in a pinned comment. The range listed is an estimate of how far away the receiver can detect targets from. I want to stress that this is an estimate, as some radar transmitters are stronger than others. Next, the stat cards list a whole bunch of advanced features the units might have. Let's go through them one by one. Tracking detection indicates that the unit can detect when you're being tracked, that is, when a radar set has locked on. This will usually be shown as a box above the circular display. Launch detection indicates that the unit can detect when a missile is launched at you. This isn't foolproof, and it can often go off incorrectly if a missile is launched at a nearby aircraft. It's normally shown as a box above the circular display. Signal strength indicates that the unit will use the strength of the radar signal to try and estimate how far away it is, and that's shown on the circular display. This is only an estimate, and it isn't perfect. Tracked threats shows how many simultaneous radar signals the unit can handle. IFF indicates that the unit will attempt to filter out friendly radar signals. 
There are a lot of caveats to this, and Gaijin has changed how this is implemented several times, and they might change it again. So just know that the IFF may not be entirely reliable. Threat types indicates how many different categories of threats the unit can identify. These will be shown as boxes below the radar warning receiver's circular display, and I have a section later on going over these boxes and what they all mean. Importantly, this will not indicate which signal is coming from what type of threat. Threat types on scope indicates how many different types of itemized threats the unit can display and show on the circular display, which will show you which signal is what threat. LWR indicates that the unit has a laser warning receiver, which I cover in a later section. LWRs are usually on helicopters, and this isn't technically part of the radar warning receiver, but it uses the same interface, so I'm covering them here for a completeness. MAW indicates that the unit has a missile approach warning sensor, which I cover in a later section. Again, this isn't technically part of the radar warning receiver, but it uses the same interface, so I'm covering it here for completeness. Now let's look at the actual radar warning receiver user interface, which is that circular display on the side of the screen. For simplicity, I classify radar warning receivers into two categories, sensor-based and directional-based. Sensor-based systems are going to show you which sensors on the outside of the aircraft are receiving a signal at that particular time. Most of these are Soviet lineage receivers, but not all of them. The actual displays for these is entirely different out in real life, but War Thunder uses the Western-style circular display. Direction-based systems try to calculate a more precise direction that the signal is coming from by triangulating the signal across the different sensors. Please note that when the radar warning receiver is not detecting any signals, it collapses into a small little circle with a plane in it. The idea with the circular display in War Thunder is that they tried to come up with one user interface to represent all of the different radar warning receivers out there so that it's a little easier to learn for the player. In practice, it actually works pretty well. In addition to the visuals on the display, you also get some audio cues. When you're being tracked by search radar, you get this sound. When you're locked up by tracking radar, you get this sound. And when your radar warning receiver detects a missile launch, you get this wonderful sound. It's worth noting that there are one or two oddball radar warning receivers, like this F-104S ASA, that only give you the audio tones with no visuals on the circular display. Check it out. As for regular units, let's check out sensor-based systems first. War Thunder has translated these sensor-based systems onto the circular display by having the sensors on the outside edge of the circle as if viewed from the top down. When one of the sensors receives a signal, it shows up as a ping on the edge of the circle. Additionally, the directional scope of the sensor is highlighted, showing you the approximate direction that particular sensor is detecting signals from. Now, sometimes there can be overlap. For example, if someone is directly behind you and has you on radar, it may show up as both rear sensors going off at the same time. So you have to read the display and kind of extrapolate the information for yourself. If your unit has threat type tracking, these will be displayed as boxes down below the circular display, and again, I'll be going over those later. Next are direction-based systems. These will try to triangulate the incoming signal to estimate a direction more precisely than sensor-based systems do. Most, but not all, direction-based systems also support signal strength range estimation and threat type identification. For simplicity's sake, the displays on this chart support both, but just know that there are one or two oddball units that support direction-based sensing, but the pings will show up as the little half circles instead of being identified by threat type. There are also one or two oddball direction-based units that have some threat types displayed as boxes below the circle instead of just inside the circle, and many helicopter units actually show the threat type with the boxes in addition to inside the circular display. 
As a comparison, here are sensor-based systems on the top and direction-based systems on the bottom showing you the exact same information. From left to right, we have an F4 Phantom at long range detecting you in search mode. An F4 Phantom at long range locked on and launching a semi-active radar missile from behind and to the left. A 2S6 SPAA unit at medium range directly ahead targeting you in search mode. A ZSU-23-4 Shilka SPAA unit at medium range locked on ahead and to the left. As you can see, the same radar situation looks completely different depending on which type of radar warning receiver you have. Next we're going to look at missile approach warning systems. There are a few aircraft that get these, but mostly they're found on helicopters. You'll notice that the circular display for helicopters is over on the right side of the screen instead of the left, and there's an extra ring around the circular radar warning receiver display. When your missile approach warning system detects an incoming missile, a few things happen. First, you get an audio tone, and the missile box above the circular display starts blinking. You also get a little missile icon inside the outer ring showing you the approximate direction that the missile is coming from. Third, the system will start to automatically deploy countermeasures. Note that it starts dumping countermeasures as soon as a missile is detected, and it doesn't stop until the missile is gone, or you run out of countermeasures, and it's not uncommon for the system to dump your entire supply on just one or two missiles if they're fired from long range. If you want to turn this feature off, the keybind is countermeasures slaving to MAW on off. If you turn it off, you'll still get the audio alert and the visual indicators on the display. It just won't dump your entire supply of countermeasures the first time somebody takes a shot. This brings us to laser warning receivers. Again, these are generally found on helicopters and they also use the outer ring of the display. When your receiver detects an incoming laser, such as from the laser rangefinder on a tank, or a laser targeter from another helicopter that's setting you up for a laser guided missile shot, you'll get an audio warning, the laser box will start blinking above the display, and you'll get a laser icon in the outer ring in the estimated direction that the laser is coming from. Note that the laser warning receiver on this KA-50 uses the SPO-15 radar warning receiver as its base, which is a sensor-based system. So instead of getting an estimated direction, it just lights up the sensor that's detecting the lays. Again, there are a lot of variations in these units in-game, so you occasionally see unusual combinations like this. Now let's take a look at all the different trackable threat types. These are those little boxes that light up below the circular display. As you can see, there's a huge list, but not all radar warning receivers are going to track all of these. The trackable threats will show up as dimmed boxes, and when one of them is active, it lights up. Fairly intuitive. Most of these are kind of broad. For example, AI for air intercept radar from an aircraft, Hawk for the Hawk surface-to-air missile system, or SAMs that use a similar radar to the Hawk, TWS to show you that you're being lit up by track while scan, CW showing you that you're being tracked by a continuous wave signal that's usually for semi-active missile guidance, so on and so on. I'll leave this up for a moment so you can have a look, and it might be useful to take a note of what threats your plane's unit can track the first few times you fly it out. It's also possible that more threat types will be added to the game over time, but the list we have now is fairly comprehensive and it should be current for quite a while. Lastly, let's take a look at all the different types of threats that can be tracked on the circular display by more advanced radar warning receivers. Again, it's a huge list, but it's fairly intuitive. It's worth remembering that some aircraft use radar sets that are similar to others and are going to be misidentified. For example, the Harrier II uses the radar from the F-18 Hornet, the F-4 EJ Kai uses the radar set from the F-16, the Yak-141 uses the MiG-29's radar, so on and so on. It's possible, quite likely actually, 
that this list will grow over time as more advanced jets are added into War Thunder. However, they'll probably be pretty obvious. For example, the F-104 Starfighter shows up as the number 104 on the display. If the F-102 Delta Dagger gets added to the game, and you see a 102 on your display out in a match, it's a safe bet what it is. Well, that about wraps it up for radar warning receivers in War Thunder. As a reminder, if you need a refresher about radar systems, I'll put a link to my radar guide in a pinned comment. As always, thanks for watching.